Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back. It's not a third channel, I don't know what this is video. This is a line of people here at LAX Airport, that is Los Angeles International Airport. International because it goes places that aren't the United States. Wow, this video is so great, huh? But I'm here uh, looking at a line of people and realizing something just really special about this. Like, you know what, lining up for security, there's a lot of different ways to do it, right? There's TSA pre-check, there's clear. I don't know what the difference between those two things is or how that works, but they both exist. And then there's Premier Access Gold Track over there. And then there's Economy. And it's just so interesting to see these different lines for what is effectively the same process happening over there that I'm definitely not allowed to take videos off, so I'm gonna focus back over here. But it's interesting, right? And you know what else is interesting? Uh, looking at all of this, by the way, there's, there's little gaps in the glass. I can, <laughs> I know why that interests me so much. Like this, this area right here has to be sterile. Um, like nothing, no people, no thing should be able to get from here on this side of security to there on that side of security. But I could totally like, what, jam my phone through there, right? I bet I could. I bet I, oh, I, I, I genuinely could. Anyway, so, <laughs> <laughs> Besides getting in trouble at airports, I want to talk about something, um, and I want to talk about it because I realized something uh, kind of interesting with what I do here. That is, I, um, I, I, I've tried to work out what it is that I find interesting about uh, what I do on the internet, but also what it is that makes it successful. What is the, what is the corn nugget uh, that defines me being good or bad at my own job? And I think the real connection point, you know, the thing that makes the skill that is hard to learn, that I've tried to, um, I guess, like, find people who are good at, but can't quite find the words to put into, I feel like the way to describe it is actually finding interesting things. Find things that are interesting, share those things that are interesting, and if they're interesting, people will find them interesting, and they'll, you know, click on them, or they'll, you know, they'll, they'll watch a whole uh, long thing about them, or maybe they'll even find the person that found them interesting to be so interesting that they want to see more of his interesting things, and boom, you can create a revenue cycle from that. And, um, <laughs> honestly, uh, I feel like the first channel, very easy to work that one out. It's a video game. Um, I wouldn't say very easy to work it out, actually. The trends in, in, in Minecraft are very interesting in some ways. And like, you know what, second channel, it's just things I find interesting personally about geography and the world and stuff. But something I wanted to talk about this third channel is that I, I, I sometimes feel this, I can see the views on the videos of this channel really clearly pointing towards certain things. Like when e-scooters were a trend, any video you could make about those was like exploding my channel. I'd make a, you know, I'd make a relatively, I could make a thousand times as much money overnight, go from making $3 to a whole $30 a day. I think I made one day, it was crazy, um, from <laughs> just making these scooter videos, right? And it's so interesting because I could, I can see the exact same thing kind of happening here and I, <laughs> I, I, I'm so worried this video is going to come across as like me saying things, you know, me trying to compliment myself at what I do. And some, some part of that is true, right? You need to work out what skills you have that you think are valuable in the world. But also some part of this video is me saying, I think what this third channel, you know, sometimes I, I sometimes notice like there is a thing I find particularly interesting about something, but I know it won't resonate with people. I think an example of this was biking over the Williamsburg Bridge. <laughs> It was like this super hard thing for me, and I knew like it's just gonna look because of this uh, the GoPro uh, mount that I use. It's just gonna look like a guy very slowly going up a bridge. In fact, I even got overtaken by someone there. And like walk and talks are a type of video I really enjoy. I love to look for a city through the lenses if I'm actually there because I love traveling. I'm in this weird niche of people who love traveling and like you know long talks etc. I'm making some of this, you know, to some extent it's like for me, I'm trying to find, fill this little niche. And so today, I want to talk about things that I find interesting, that I know the world doesn't. I just wanted to share it today. Also, I know I'm the worst of masks, you know, everyone always gets mad, they're like, oh, Toy Cat, the way you're wearing your mask is worse than spreading, you, you basically kill my grandma the way that you're wearing a mask, and it's nice. I love that that's finally ending because most of the countries my viewers live in, they, they live in places where COVID is effectively done, right? It's crazy that that's true, and that we got here. But what do I find interesting about the world? This corridor right here, I'm in LAX. This is one of the busiest airports in the world, but there is a corridor that is this long and this is up. There is one person following me through this corridor. I think there was one guy ahead of me before, right? That is it. That is all you find in this, in this little corridor. Um, you know what I find interesting? 
airports and just the flow of people through them in general like isn't it weird that there might be a thousand people can't go that way there's a <laughs> i can but there's a tsa checkpoint and again have to be very careful not to record security checkpoints on this channel uh for reasons you might you might be able to work out why that's smart to do so i guess i'm heading back through the interesting corridor back towards the other end but like this is interesting to me seeing uh for instance uh the busiest flights um like there was there was like a hundred you know like there was a lot of people crowded around a flight it was going to uh Sal san salvador and it's like oh yeah when you picture in your mind like places people are going you probably picture them going to places like you would like to go but like you know the truth is you probably never considered a trip to el salvador but for hundreds of people most of them aren't actually considering trips they're going back home they're something it's it's really like kind of broken my heart this like the thing that has sunk in now more than ever is this idea that the only reason to cross country borders is to go on holiday. The reason the pandemic started is people going on holidays or, you know, if you're if you're sophisticated and you're you're a classy capitalist, the reason is because like, oh, it's um <laughs> it's because like, oh, you're not your classy capitalist, you're a classy socialist maybe, what's it called? A champagne socialist where you have to everything has to be some criticism of the elite. But um but like not the not that elite, the other elite. And um so like maybe it's like, oh, it's actually wealthy people flying on their private jets across the world. In reality, most traveling across international borders is people who have their home and their work life or like, you know, their family, their work, or yeah, <laughs> like are separated by borders. Some of it is people who have their home or their work and their recreation separated by that. I mean, one of my favorite things to do is to travel recreationally. But it's interesting seeing from this last year where that recreational demand has dropped that there are still so many people, hundreds of people. I think one of these planes right here is going to El Salvador. San Salvador is the capital, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it's super interesting to me to see that like, yeah, there are hundreds of people going there. And um, so something I was thinking about is like, why do I want to share these things that I know are interesting, but I genuinely don't believe many people out there like, I'm, you know, if, if, if there's hundreds of people that watch this video and maybe, you know, or let's say a thousand even, you know, and hundreds of people might find a normal thing interesting and it might be dozens here or like even fewer than a dozen, a half dozen people. Why would you share things that are interesting to a half dozen people? What value are you getting from that? Ignoring the fact that you're not only not creating value from sharing a thing with seven people, you're kind of destroying value. The, the whole value that comes from having a uh, a, a, a portal to the internet, whether that be a YouTube channel or whether that be a, another social uh, media lens. The whole value is that people want to see it and the, the more you show them things they're not interested in, the more you actively destroy that value. You know, a subscriber or a follower only means as much as they actually want to see your stuff. Um, <laughs> and so um, it's interesting because you're acti you know, why, why would you actively destroy value? To show people things like big busy flights and empty parts of airports and the fact that in LA you can see right down to the security line from up here. Why would you why would you share that with people, you know? And the answer, I think there's like this weird deep human need. I think we all have deep human needs that we express in different ways. And I think one of the one of the ones that like is really weird to admit uh, that you have. And I don't know if most people have it. I choose to believe uh, not <laughs> because of what I'm about to say. But I think I have a a need whether I whether I know or want it or not like being special right so being something about you being unique and different and <laughs> you know you're not like the other girls you're not like the other human beings you're special you're different um it's the same we have this desire in us somewhere like you think about how cities have millions of people living in them in pretty much the same concept like an apartment building but every apartment building has something special about it every area of a big city has something special about it some reason that people want to live there i think that about the new area i just moved into in london uh i stayed in a pretty interesting area in san francisco i think but in reality everyone <laughs> vast majority of people think their thing is interesting and it doesn't mean the vast majority of people are wrong uh, in the slightest, right? It's just that people like to believe there is specialness to something. If you're not special, then what's the point of it all, you know? And um, so one of the things that I wanted to kind of uh, finish this with is that, of course, I have that desire. Of course, my big goal is, uh, one of my deep desires is sharing that thing, being it seen 
but I think everyone has these inside of them. And one of the most important steps you can take as a human is work out what they are, or at least, you know, because um, what's a dumb thing that you like? I, I really like traveling. Why, why do I like traveling? It can't be the physical act of moving, right? Because sometimes I don't enjoy that. It's not that I enjoy going through security checkpoints and having my life examined like that, right? No, it's not that either. Uh, it's not the the hours of my life that I'm losing every time I'm going in transit. I'm about to take a six hour flight to the East Coast. That's just gone time, plus gone money, plus opportunity cost. Could be making real things in that time. So what am I enjoying from it, you know? Working out why you feel compelled to do the things you do. Um, I really, like, uh, here's an interesting one. I really enjoy playing video games. Like, I, when I look at games, I'm like, oh man, wish I could play that. Like, there's so many PlayStation series games that I've just been ignoring could pick up a PS5 and start playing them. And I keep thinking I want to do that, but then I never do. Instead, if I have spare time, I don't buy a PlayStation 5. I'll make a third channel video or a second channel video, or I'll go traveling, or I'll go on a walk. Uh, whether I record it or not, I'll share it with the internet. Why is that, you know? Questioning, <laughs> the difference, questioning the difference between what you think you want to do and what you end up doing. Uh, questioning why it is that you do things that you can't, uh, easily explain. It's probably a good idea. I think <laughs> so much of being a good human is just trying to know yourself. And so I don't fully know myself. Or maybe that's actually like, I feel like it's a stereotype that you spend your, your 20s getting to know yourself, right? I don't know why it's a stereotype. I'm not going to know myself fully at the end. I'm going to have a revelation in 10 years. It might destroy my life. I'm going to have a revolution in three weeks that might destroy my life. Um, Truth is, Rory's having revelations all the time. But uh, right now, I'm just trying to, you know, understand me. And uh, so here's an interesting thing. This is a third channel video. I really don't care. I'm just kidding. I care about your opinion. Please think I'm special and quirky and don't forget about me. Goodbye.